Reiki, just because I've been attuned to it and I, I like taught, Mm -hmm. teach it or was taught it Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I'm any more powerful than you are. Right. Not knowing it. We all have this universal life force energy. Yeah. It's just, this is one teaching, one modality, one method of channeling it and moving it. Mm. Right. And it's very effective and it works really well. Hello, my friends. Welcome to It's All Magic. I am your guide, your host, and your friend, Devin Hine. And here, we'll be discussing how to make your life truly feel like magic. I believe that our very existence on Earth is nothing less than a miracle, and that we all have so much potential to learn, to grow, to experience, and to create during our short time here. It is both my passion and my pleasure to walk this path of life optimization by your side, where we'll discuss topics like passion, purpose, intuition, manifestation, physical well-being, and much, much more. I'm a yoga teacher, a meditation and breathwork facilitator, and a national board certified health and wellness coach. But more importantly, I am an eternal optimist, a lover of life, and a forever student. It is my hope that with each and every episode, you too, will finally start to believe it really is all magic after all. Ready to dive in? Let's do it. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. Today, I know I say this every week, but we are in for a real treat. (laughs) I am really excited about today's guest. And I do say that every week because I really believe that the guests on the show are divinely orchestrated. They are so meant to be here just as you are so meant to be listening or watching this. This whole thing is divinely orchestrated, divinely made. And so today's guest is no exception. Today, I am speaking to Jenna Monaco. She is a spiritual heart-led entrepreneur with her business, Santa Cruz Mountain Reiki. She is a Reiki master and teacher. She is also this intuitive healer woman. I mean, she has really created a business where she is able to masterfully mold all of the healing and intuitive modalities and the healing arts into one beautiful product. So I am proud to be her friend and simply proud to know her. I actually met Jenna the day after my last day at my corporate job at a time when I asked the universe for a little help a little guidance because it was the day after I had left my job I was feeling a little sad and a little lost dare I say it not that I was lost as to what I wanted to do next but I was kind of grieving the loss of what had been this entity in my life every single day for a year and a half and so that morning I woke up it was a Saturday morning and I just said to the universe please send me a sign, send me some form of comfort or guidance or clarity. And that afternoon, when I went to one of my favorite bookstores in the world, which is Kepler's in Menlo Park, California, my hometown, I ended up meeting an angel and her name was Jenna Monaco. So we ended up talking for at least an hour in the fantasy book section and We covered every topic from astrology to tarot to intuition, psychic abilities, animal communication, and today's conversation is also no exception. We talk so much about Jenna's mental health journey from panic attacks and anxiety to finding meditation and this whole world of intuition and psychic clairvoyant clairaudient abilities. We talk about animal communication. We talk about Reiki and the ways in which energy can heal us energetically, emotionally, mentally, and physically. So there is a lot of good stuff in today's conversation and I have no doubt you will enjoy it as much as I did. Before we dive into the conversation, though, as always, I want to open up the space to do a little bit of breathing. 
Because Jenna actually mentions a form of breathing in this conversation, I would like to do that in honor of her. So she mentions diaphragmatic breathing, which is essentially a fancy way of saying breathing deep into the belly and then exhaling fully. So many of us take those shallow breaths in and out of the chest where we're barely even conscious of breathing if we are at all. Diaphragmatic breathing is almost the image of a baby sleeping peacefully in a crib where its belly is extending and then coming back to neutral. So that's what we want to do today. We're going to take five deep breaths. We're going to fill up our lungs entirely, bringing that air down into the belly, down towards the diaphragm, and then we're just going to sigh it out as well. So let's have fun with it. If you'd like to close your eyes, as always, you have the opportunity to do so now. And just getting comfortable, whether you are on a walk with your eyes open or not, let's just roll the shoulders up to the ears with an inhale and then roll them down your back with an exhale. (sighs) Okay, let's begin our five breaths. Go ahead and just empty out from your previous breath here. And then inhale through the nose, filling up all the way, the belly, the ribs, the chest. And sigh it all out. (sighs) And again, inhale even fuller this time. And sigh it all out, completely emptying out. (sighs) And again, filling up the belly, the ribs, the chest. And open mouth, sigh it out. (sighs) Two more. Inhale through the nose. And let it go. (sighs) Last one, deepest and fullest yet. And let it all go. (sighs) Hmm. You can flutter open your eyelids if you got the chance to close them. Beautiful, 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 my friends. Ah, feel like a new woman as always. Every time I do that breathing, I always feel like a new woman. So without further ado, let's dive into the conversation. Enjoy. I will see you on the other side. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another magical episode of It's All Magic. I am very, very excited about today's guest because she is simply a wonder woman. She is multi-passionate. She is a writer. She is a Reiki master. She is learning all of the intuitive arts, the healing arts, and I'm constantly amazed by her. She also has her own incredible podcast called Spark Intention, which I have actually mentioned on the podcast before. So if you haven't checked it, checked it out yet, please go ahead and check it out without further ado. Welcome, Jenna Monaco. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that introduction. I, <laughs> Sweating I should, already. Should I have you around all the time? Be like, yes. actually, I'm going to just let you introduce me. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then we can pick a theme song. And when you walk into the room, you'll feel amazing. What would your theme song be? Though, oh, I was going to ask to? you. I don't know why. I'm going to just pretend that this is an intuitive download I'm getting. But the first song that came to my head is the... I'm coming up, so you better get this party started. A little bit of pink action. Yes. I love it. From like the 90s. What about you? Yes. Um, mine would also be from the 90s. or I think it's late 90s with Spice okay. Up Your Life. Amazing yeah. choice. Yeah. I've always like, I've always been like, if I ever was asked to be on stage for anything, I would be yes. like, that dun, dun, da, 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 da. oh, so and you yeah, just I'm can't just like, go yeah, wrong with the 90s jams. No. Like, we what what have we done with music other than i know taylor swift big fan over here we we can maybe get there later because that would be fun so much so much to talk about (laughs) so much to talk about (laughs) but i want to start with the question that i ask all my guests which is very themed for it's all magic which is for you what makes life truly feel like magic I should have done my homework. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Most don't. <laughs> I, it's never one for homework. Yes. Um, gosh. This might sound really, really cheesy, but 
like just the fact that I get to be alive, like that thought mm. honestly makes me just like, it gives me chills every time I think about it. Of just like, I get to be here. Like yeah. it is messy and it is scary and it is hard at times. And it's also just like so freaking beautiful. Mm. Um, and to be in like in the throes of that beauty, I think is just that is magic to me. And then to to be witness to the synchronicities, to be witness to other people finding their joy or being in their joy or um, even the hardest parts of life and like being there with people, like the capacity that humans have never ceases to amaze me and it feels like magic. Oh, I love that. It yeah. makes so much sense. I honestly was thinking about something very similar this morning. I was on Instagram as we all as are these days. Is. <laughs> and <Yes. laughs> I saw this video at first. I was like, oh, it's just another one of these like comedy videos or spammy videos. But it was a video talking about how in Brazil, apparently they have a tradition that anytime you have a cake, you give the first slice of cake to the person you love the most. And usually you give it to like the mother or the father, or whoever the the parental figures are. But in this video, it was probably the six-year-old boy and his little brother was right next to him. And he gave his slice of cake to the little brother. The little brother burst into tears because he was so surprised that his big brother loved him that much oh and then I was sobbing yeah <laughs> watching this core memory and I had just very similar to what you said I had that moment of humanity is beautiful and when you read the news you see all the negative but if you actually watch people day to day just even in your neighborhood at the local mm. coffee shop people are good and full of love yeah. so I honestly love just how simple that answer is of just being here yeah oh, yeah so beautiful I and I think that the, the the duality is what what's like life's biggest question right yeah and that like oneness and returning to love and oneness and my guides have always told me you know Jenna it's like two sides to one coin you know it's yeah. a it's a singular coin yeah oneness but there's two sides to it and um they that wisdom has carried me through years and years of being like why like the heaviness and the pain and it's so it's so real yeah and it's so abundant and the opposite is true as well at the same time yeah so like how do we hold how do we hold that and like our capacity to hold that Mm -hmm. makes us pretty remarkable beings absolutely you know, that's completely. magic it totally is <laughs> it, it well said and I love bringing up that duality because even though I just mentioned all the love the light the goodness that could almost get boring if you will and I feel like what makes this whole experience so magical is having that mystery especially of course coming from a Scorpio you kind of like that there's a little bit of the dark side of the moon too which I agree with so speaking of some of that darkness that heaviness that might be a terrible transition but I do really want to hear about kind of your mental health journey because oh, yeah. I know now you are I mean just a healer in every way that you could use that word so many different modalities which we'll get to but I want to hear more about what brought you to that because for so many healers it's only because they've gone through their own healing journey and I know you've struggled with anxiety panic attacks things like that so can you kind of take us back in time yeah. to whatever point in time feels right to kind of tell this story yeah absolutely and before we go there I I I want to pose the question to everybody like when you were saying like oh we like we're like for as much darkness like I'm I'm going into the love and the light and like yeah. but like is it even possible to have it without the dark it would just be no, nothing would be like nothing. like without yeah. you can't have courage without fear you can't have these you can't have any of those things without without its opposing and so yes. like, but that's what makes it whole, you know? And so that's a really interesting thing to ponder. I don't have any answers. It's just, yeah. it's a question though, that I always, I'm always thinking about noodling I on. I love that. So for my, for my mental health journey, um, it's, it's ever growing. It's, it's still here. It's mm -hmm. a management journey, if you will. Um, and <clears throat> 
I, when I was in my early 20s, I was suffering daily from panic attacks and it was after my dad had passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, He was an alcoholic and he, he died from being an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And I'm very open about that. I'm very candid about it. I think it's really important to me. Part of the reason I started Spark Intention was because I wanted to remove that negative stigma and shame around acknowledging our mental health, talking openly about our mental health, and kind of asking this question to myself of like, had had that been okay? Like, had getting the help that we needed to get been okay, would my dad still be here? And I don't really like um, dwell on it at all, but I, it is an important question to just honor and, and ask. Mm. And I think about that for so many people who struggle or who have turned to um, addiction, you know, like have that disease of addiction. And I, th- I think about that a lot. And I often think about going back, honestly, to school mm. to study psychology. And, you know, I, yeah. I think about it a lot, but I, we're not there yet. But, um, but I think one of the most empowering things that I learned on my journey was that we are our own healers. Um, and so I I do hold space in the healing arts. Like as a Reiki master, I we do, healing happens within our sessions, but that's only because the person is healing themselves. I'm not doing that for them. Um, and I think that that's really what sang to me um, when I started like diving into this, especially Reiki, but Um, the healing arts of like, okay, so there is agency here for me. And that was what I felt like I lacked was any sense Mm -hmm. of control. Um, And in knowing what I can control, I'm able to release what I can't. And that was a huge part of my anxiety was just everything fell out of control. When you're in your early 20s, like you don't know what you're doing. You're like, I guess I'm an adult because everyone tells me I am, but I don't know what I want. I don't know who I am. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't, my dad, like for me, I was like, my dad's just died. I, I don't know what I want. I don't know who I am. And I know that I, I know I don't fit in. I know mm-hmm. I don't feel like I fit in. And I know that I like certain things, but I know I don't like other things. And I don't really know what that leaves me with and so on top of just being in your early 20s which I think can be a really stressful time yes of development because you're kind of thrust into adulthood and you're like ah I don't I don't know how to do any of this and you're just kind of left to your own devices in this really bizarre way then you're also I was also grappling with a lot of trauma um, unaddressed trauma. I didn't know how to navigate through my feelings. Those felt mm. really scary. And so my go-to was just to like deal with it later. Mm. And that's when the panic attacks really just kind of reared their head, you know, the anxiety just reared its head. Yeah. And um, to make a long story, very long story, a little more condensed because I've already <laughs> talked a lot. Um, I just, I went to doctors and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And I didn't get diagnosed with anxiety um, at the time. I just read a book and the character was having the same exact symptoms I was having. Wow. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's panic attacks. And I was like, that's so bizarre because my life before my dad passed was so hard and mm. so um, dark. Mm. And I i had come out of that. And so I was like, it didn't even occur to me that I could be stressed. I could be in chronic stress because I was like, that phase of my life is done though, you know? Yes. And so just the lack of understanding, the lack of knowledge really just kind of catapulted me coupled with this compassion for my dad and his journey. Yeah. Um, just like catapulted me into this, like I need to understand myself and then in my early 20s too of like I need to I know I meant for more I just had that feeling I was like I know I meant for more than just working a nine to five and there's no shade on that at all that's not what it what I mean but I just know for me I was like I don't I I I literally feel like I would die like I just feel like I would wilt and my soul would just cease to exist and that's the I know it sounds dramatic but like that's really how it feels yeah and um and so all of that kind of came into this perfect storm. And that's that was really my journey yeah. with it. 
and um, with the help of, a, of an amazing therapist and honestly the internet and I know that that's mm. that's kind of a uh you know I don't I don't recommend it like right. it would be great in the perfect system to have like formal diagnosis and things like that but I was able to manage my anxiety through meditation um and through self-understanding I think 90 percent of the yeah. anxiety for me was not knowing what was happening to me yeah um and so that alleviated a huge chunk of it. And so awareness is always the first step in any journey, I think, you know. I love that. It's there's so much to touch on, which we'll <laughs> we'll go from there. I but a lot. <laughs> no, no, it was beautiful. And I love that you said that awareness was almost half of that battle. You said meditation and awareness, because I was just speaking to someone the other day about how something astrology and mental health have in common, in my opinion is that a lot of people will say, well, if you're told, oh, a Leo is this, and then you're like, yes, it kind of becomes the self-fulfilling prophecy. But I also like to see it from the lens of if someone who has been dealing with panic attacks for years is told you actually have this thing called panic disorder and there's a way out, that is healing, that is relief, that is freedom. And so I don't think there's harm in being told you're not alone this thing you're experiencing is real it's valid mm -hmm. so I love that awareness piece and I also want to touch on the meditation piece because what fascinates me about that story even is hearing someone going from anxiety and panic attacks to sitting in stillness with their thoughts and emotions. So can you walk us through that journey? How did that even work? And, and what style of meditation ended up working for you? That's such a good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. I So I'm, I'm actually in the process of getting diagnosed for ADHD now. So okay. there's a good chance that I have ADHD. I know I'm dyslexic for sure. Okay. Um, but I might not be. I might not have ADHD. But the sitting part is really what was hard um, mm -hmm. for me and, and the racing of the brain. And I love to learn. And I think that learning is, and the curiosity is like a critical piece to, to this because yeah. when we invite in the curiosity or the playful side of things, we're more inclined to stick with it. Yeah. Um, and so a uh, short answer is what kept me going or what like kind of got me into the meditation piece was was honestly the pain of being where I was at and mm -hmm. just the desperation to get out. Um, so that that was why I started with meditation. It was I was I felt like I was exhausted all my options. I'd gone to the doctors. They just kind of scooted me on my way mm -hmm. so I was like well I don't I don't know where this leaves me like I don't know what to do I still have this thing that I'm going through um and I heard meditation was helpful yeah and I was never much of yoga girly I I tried and I just like felt like I was laying there and I was like am I doing this right like you know just like yes. all of the thoughts and the feelings and I was just so I think I went to YouTube first and visualization was kind of my gateway into um, being able to sit still mm -hmm. and meditate and holding um, holding something like a crystal or something like that. Okay. So that that like tactile piece of being able to like move it in my hands of um, of just like my mind is busy with a one track thing. Like I'm visualizing something, so my mind's still busy, but mm -hmm. it has a task. It has a job. And then from there, I was able to kind of sit. And then I was interested in guides. I was interested in communicating with my guides if I could even do that. Yes. So then I was like, okay, well, now I really do have to sit in silence. Because if I'm going to hear hear them, if I'm ever going to hear anything, <laughs> yes. um, I, I have to sit in silence. And so that was kind of the segue. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I love that it was both the pain of where you were in the present saying, I have to get the hell out of jo Dodge because this is not going to work. Yeah. But also yearning for the peace, the clarity, the guidance from those guides connecting with something greater than yourself. And what I'm getting at here is 
that connection between mental health and the spiritual journey. Oh, a million percent. That they are so intertwined. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that was kind of the the beginning of your spiritual journey, your awakening, if you will, or was it a different point in your path? A hundred percent. I was like, wow, there is really, there's really something here. Like yeah. there's, there's no denying that there's something. And then I, I was like, honestly, like a hound on a scent. I was mm. like, and now I want to know. Like now I want to know. I want to either prove it or disprove it. And I want to know. And of course, being in my 20s, thinking I know everything, right? I just, and being very cynical um, yes. and very skeptical. And I still do have that skepticism. It's just, I call it discernment now. It, there's there's more of this understanding of like, wow, I really won't ever know everything. Yeah, I, I'll probably, the more you know, the less you know almost, yes. you know? So, <laughs> so, um, but I, but that was really what catapulted me into, into trying to figure it out. And, Absolutely. And, um, and then the curiosity piece too of like, again, can I do this? Can I even, you know, I'd always been interested in, we were talking about practical magic yes. before this. And I was always thinking about like magic and, and I was like, what if it is real? You know, like what yes. if it is, you know, I want to know. Absolutely. So I don't know. I was always like open but skeptical and I still live in that camp and I love to I love to to work with people in that realm because I think that that discernment is is critical and grounding yeah and I think that when we close ourselves off to it completely we're denying ourselves the deepest level of healing that we could go through yeah and and that that's why I think opening ourselves up to it that journey alone is like a uh, healing, yes. you know, a huge part of the healing process. Absolutely. And I love that you even being this intuitive healer says that a little bit of skepticism is completely healthy and okay. So healthy. And I think I've really learned that from watching Cal actually, because it's not that I'm not skeptical, but I think I am very idealistic and I've always believed in magic and I was the little girl in a tutu wanting to be Dorothy with my red heels. Like it just, I've always had that aspect of the world is sparkly and light, but watching Cal, not not that he's Debbie Downer, that was a terrible <laughs> transition, but he has a little bit more of that skepticism, that discernment with certain spiritual topics that we'll discuss in our home and what he has been yearning for recently and by recently probably the last like five to ten years but especially the last couple months he wants his own full body experience of something spiritual so he has been deeply studying astral projection if you're familiar with that at all yes and He's trying like heck to have that experience. So far, I think he's still kind of too much in that conscious mind and kind of holding himself back a little bit. Um, I bring that up just to say that I think you can you can play in this world and still have your feet on the ground and have a little bit of discernment. So thank you for saying that because I think there are even people in my own life who are almost afraid to even say they're interested in this stuff or are so closed off because because they want to fully be that scientific skeptical person yeah but maybe you can be both absolutely i mean science science is mysticism (sighs) yes like at the at its core the whole point of scientific study is to ask questions of things that we don't know and prove them and so without curiosity we don't have science. Mm-hmm. We don't. We we don't have it. So, and I love science. Science was my favorite subject as a kid. Me so, too. yeah, I I when I started this, and then of course I've dabbled in so many modalities because I want. I was my own guinea pig. I was like, well, if it's real, then I can do it. Yeah, you know, if it's real, I will be able to talk to the other side. If it's real. <laughs> I'll be able to do these things. And I always use myself kind of as a spirometer because I was like, well, I am so skeptical. So like, and so when I got attuned to my Reiki one, yeah. in, in my Reiki one, I, they were like, oh, you might experience, you know, like stomach aches or this and that. And you might not, but you might. And I was like, okay, you know, sure. Mm-hmm. 
And I know that's a, that makes me sound like such a jerk, but but I have to honor that there is that part of me that exists. Yes. And um and then when my stomach did start hurting, <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, "Oh, okay, this is real though." And so and so that that makes me that I do kind of nurture and hold on to it, I think too, because I I did grow up in Catholicism and I do have a lot of religious trauma as well. And so that Mm. skepticism was born out of Mm self-protection. So, so I do think that there is that level of it too. And I do think that you, you can be both skeptical and you can be mystical. Absolutely. I'm Mm -hmm. a living, breathing example of that. I think it can be grounding and I do think it can hold us back. It's again, it's that like, it's that dance it's that harmonization it's yeah yeah, that fine line so well said so in terms of kind of this mental spiritual journey so you find meditation therapy you are both trying to get away from the current place you're in and reaching for something greater than yourself at what point in your journey did you find Reiki? Because I know you started mentioning it and I haven't talked about Reiki on the podcast yet. So I want to go in deep with what it is and all that jazz. But let's just start with kind of your story. What actually led you to discovering Reiki? Whew, that's a good question. I feel like, I mean, I grew up in California, as you did. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're, we're more uh, likely to be, um, how do you say, like, introduced to these like things these kind of new age they're not new age (laughs) right they're very Very ancient (laughs) um but you know kind of things so reiki i heard about when i was in way before in my early 20s um maybe even like late teens i'd heard about it and i was like oh that's really cool and super interesting and I just kind of let it go. And then having the podcast, I had mm-hmm. interviewed Reiki masters and I was like, that's so fascinating, you know? And, and then I just kind of lived and it's, it just kind of existed and kind of came in and out of my life. And then yeah. in 2020, I will backtrack 2016, two years before the podcast, two years before I really started diving into like, what is this business that mm-hmm. I'm thinking of doing? I had a Reiki session with someone in the city. I forget their name, but that was a wild experience. Like my hands and feet were felt like they were on fire and I was wow. so dizzy I couldn't get off the table. And I was like, what just happened? Like what just happened? Mm-hmm. So then I was like, my curiosity was peaked. Yes. And I was like, what, what was this? And so... I kind of just kept it in my back pocket again. And then 2020, one of my dear friends um, who owns Palo Alto Reiki, okay. which is where Santa Cruz Mountain Reiki comes from, mm. her name's Kristen, she start studied Reiki uh, 2020, and she just she just went for it, and she just dove in. She's an Aries. Okay. And she just, she just dove in. Yes. And she – um she's just like the best like I loved her Reiki sessions I still Mm -hmm. do I love her Reiki sessions I have Reiki sessions with her often Mm -hmm. and every session I had with her just something new opened up for me you know just like a new insight new clarity and I was just like this is so good and so she started teaching Reiki and I was like that's it like I'm in like teach me Reiki one I really want to know what this is all about so I just kind of felt called to it in 2021 yeah and then I'm also kind of that person where it's really hard for me not to finish a book like I have like once I've committed to something I want to like go all in and I want to I want to like apprentice almost yeah that very like yearning to just really immerse myself so that then I just kept going with it and it took me three years um to to get to Reiki three and become a Reiki master lots of training 20 hours of study like there's you know I mean there's Mm -hmm. a lot that goes into it and I didn't realize that at the time, but I was so in for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so then last year, uh, May, at the end of May, I became a Reiki master. And then that's when Santa Cruz Mountain Reiki was born. Okay. Officially. Amazing. So for anyone listening right now who doesn't even know what Reiki is. Oh, yeah. Can we kind of go back to the basics? I wanted to hear your story first, but... (laughs) What is is Reiki? Reiki? (laughs) That's such a good question. I'm so glad you asked. Um, Reiki is an energy healing modality. 
And there is no transfer of my energy to you or yours to me. It is mm-hmm. just the Reiki master is a, or the Reiki practitioner is a flow, a channel for universal life force energy to move to the person. Okay. So the way that Kristen puts it, which I think is such a good example, is she's like, you know how you go to the dentist every six months to just like cleanse your teeth and like, you know, keep them good. Reiki is kind of a similar situation. It just kind of helps you mm. keep your energy nice and clear and um, cleansed and helps move energy where there might be, quote, blocks. Mm-hmm. And she offers intuitive insights. I do as well. But there are Reiki masters who who are in different disciplines of Reiki, which goes into a whole other thing. Okay. Um, where you just go in, you the Reiki is there, it's done, and then you leave. There's no communication. It's just the Reiki, and then that's it. So wow. I think it's really interesting. That's really interesting, too, because as we're talking about this, somebody might go, okay, well, I want to you know, go get Reiki done. Yes. And then they're like, wait, Jenna said this, and like it's different. So it depends on what they're, how they're trained, too. So yeah. I, Kristen was trained, and I was trained in the Asui tradition, which okay. is the original tradition of Reiki. Okay. There's holy fire Reiki. There's all sorts of, it's kind of like yoga where it's like there's yoga and then there's like different disciplines of it. So, um, but it's in essence, it's universal life force energy is Reiki. Okay. Okay. So when you're in a session, Mm -hmm. I've had lots of Reiki sessions and they are one of my favorite things in the world. And I've since told many people to go, but for someone who hasn't experienced it, what might the person laying on the table experience what is that like yeah the way that I the best way that I can explain it well the best way to understand Reiki is to experience it yes point blank period absolutely Um, because it's going to be so different for everybody how you respond to that that energy and it might be different session to session you might Mm -hmm. you might like really get hot one time and you might get really cold another time you Mm -hmm. know it just really depends on on your energy um, so, but what you can expect is to feel really relaxed yeah. and there's so many benefits to Reiki. And I think that it's because it's from a scientific perspective, like you're giving yourself the opportunity to move out of stress mode and into rest and digest. So you're going mm. from your sympathetic nervous system to your parasympathetic nervous system, which then allows you to heal, self heal. Yeah. So that's, that's really the like crux of the benefit of Reiki. So you, often feel like you just came out of a spa day oh, totally. without having done the massage or anything like that. Yeah. But they're also moving energy too. So yes, it's, it's similar. Exactly. My most recent session was actually in August for my birthday. One of my friends who's also trained, I believe in Usui, came over and did a session for me. And I still remember it was in the middle of the day on a Wednesday because she works one day a week in San Carlos by my house. And so she was like, oh, so Wednesday. And I was like, great. And at the time I was still at my corporate job. And so, you know, I had all my morning meetings. I had gotten as much done as possible. And then I had blocked off this certain part of time in the afternoon, but like I wasn't really done with the day. Mm -hmm. And I bring that up because when my friend walked in, I was so stressed. It was like I had just been responding to emails and closing down my Slack. And then it's like, ah, okay, birthday Reiki, I can't yeah. <laughs> And I was really worried that it would in some way impact the session. Mm. And so I get on the, the table, meaning my futon, and she, you know, whatever she did, I think she had us do some breaths together, whatever. And she began the session. And the first probably five minutes I felt like I was in my kind of normal state of consciousness I still was thinking of like oh that email from Joe and that slack from Kristen or whatever and I kid you not within seven to ten minutes it felt like my body was growing into the futon I was so grounded it was like I was being plunged into the earth and my mind ceased to exist it was the craziest thing and when she kind of brought me to, so to speak, at the end, she also does kind of the intuitive messages. And she said, you know, at the beginning, what I could feel at least was like mentally you were 
kind of very closed off. And I was actually worried, like, does Devin want me to do Reiki? Is she yeah. open to this? Yeah. And she said, but then I heard the message, like, keep going. She's just stressed. Yeah. And so she kept going and, you know, she ended up having all these visions. It was such a great session, but it's crazy that she could feel that on her end and that I also energetically, emotionally, mentally felt like I went from like so stressed to oh this is so nice Mm -hmm. so I highly recommend Reiki (laughs) for anyone out there yeah it's amazing oh it is it and it's amazing as a practitioner too because you're learning about energy and you're learning you're working with your intuition yeah and Reiki goes where it needs to go can't do any harm so you're, and again, you're just the channel for it. So yeah. the the Reiki in its own way has almost like its own intelligence, right? So it's yeah. like you're kind of just a witness to where it's moving and how it's going. And it's a really incredible modality for anybody who also who wants to learn to work with their intuition mm. and like start to really develop their intuition because you have to trust. It's this like lesson and trust of like okay the reiki's going where it needs to go like you know logically you're like does heaven really want me to be here she seems like fidgety or she's like yeah she's really stressed out like i don't really know if this is like (laughs) okay she okay you know so your head's like going through that as a practitioner i'm sure yes and then at the same time it's like but i have to listen you know and say like okay no but the reiki's the reiki is moving Mm. you know the reiki's moving me like so it's it's a pretty spectacular modality and I feel really honored to to have been trained in it I feel really honored to talk about it and just be with it and I feel honored to do it with people you know be a practitioner and and work with people to teach it to work with animals Mm -hmm. like honored truly humbled and honored yes it's a humbling modality I think on both ends you know to receive it feels really humbling and to answer your question too you might Mm -hmm. see colors you might see shapes you might see nothing Mm -hmm. you might fall asleep you might cry yeah you might feel hot you might feel cold Uh, you might feel tingling sensations like I did in my hands my feet my stomach often gurgles your stomach will gurgle and it's so funny too because when you're working in an area and it's especially when that area is really taking the reiki like you'll find that like feet will twitch like if you're working on their feet feet will yeah. twitch or you're working on their throat like they'll cough um or wow. like or they'll like adjust their neck it's like without fail it <gasps> happens like pretty much every time and wow. one of my favorites i was it was a reiki one i just been done with my reiki one yeah um and certification and I was working on my friend and it was a really quick session and she like the Reiki just was like it just like went straight to between her heart and her solar plexus Mm -hmm. and I was it was just like I was holding my hands there and you know when you when you first learn it you want to be really technical it's like okay two to three minutes in this place and you know and my head's going in that place of like okay this is how it's done but it would just went straight there and it's just taking and it's taking and it's taking and again you just have to trust your intuition right so it's a huge lesson in trusting your intuition and i'm just holding it there holding it there holding it there and then every other area was you know there are about two to three minutes But it was that one between section and she came to and she's not a very like she's not super into this stuff. Yeah. She's like, all I could see was green and yellow. Like all I could see was green and yellow. The colors of the chakras. (gasps) That's beautiful. Like things like that happen. and, and, And so and then you also so it's also starts to like build up this case for, okay I don't know what any I don't know what anything is anymore. (laughs) (laughs) And and there is something to it. You know, and I think that that's just, that's what I think is the extra benefit of Reiki too, is like this intuitive piece where it's like, she intuitively was picking up on that. I intuitively was picking up on that. And it's just this like human connection of communication Mm -hmm. that goes beyond words. Absolutely. It's energy. Yes. I love that you keep touching on the fact that Reiki can help you develop your intuition because I attended this 
one hour Reiki workshop like five years ago. So it's probably laughable what we learned, but no, not at all. I remember my mind was blown because we learned this one exercise. So if you're listening, feel free to try this exercise in your own time. You can tell me if this is like a method or not, but the lady had us rub our hands together Mm -hmm. really fast Mm -hmm. and then slightly pull our hands apart, you know, eyes closed ideally and just start to feel the energy between your hands and you can kind of push and pull really lightly and see if you feel pressure, almost like the inability to close your palms. And I did. And then we practiced, you know, building the energy and, and all of that. And I've since taught a couple friends if someone was like what is this reiki thing like energy really and i'm like watch you can feel this in two minutes and so i would show them and with the very you know limited amount that i've done practices like that it it really requires me to step out of my conscious 3d world mind and almost enter into this veiled world where it's like close my eyes i have to go really inward yeah and then i can feel it and so i love that connection of it actually helps you even what you were saying with meditation earlier all of these are modalities for the same thing to kind of quiet this external world and allow yourself to go inward and hear those messages yeah so i love that so, I love that exercise. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was awesome. Are there any others that you recommend people try? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I well, and I think this is an important thing that we all learn in Reiki one, which is that we already have we already have that connection. Yeah. So like when you get attuned to Reiki one, attuned to Reiki two, and then the Reiki master, you're just opening that door wider. Okay. So you you we all have our connection to our universal life force energy. It's how we breathe it's our our heart beating like Mm -hmm. it is our it is ours it's our divine right to have it Mm -hmm. so we have it um and so that exercise of rubbing our hands together is showing showcasing how we create energy we create heat i mean like in science like we call friction right (laughs) yeah so like that is that is quite literally us creating energy right wow or, well, you don't create energy, right. I guess, but like you're transforming, transforming it. it or whatever, yes. right? So, so you're bringing that energy to your hands. Another good way to do this is if you just put your hands in the gasho position, which is like the prayer hands. Okay. You can feel the energy pulsating in your fingertips. Wow. So like if you just, if you just hold your hands together and you just feel and just like bring your, or your intention and your attention and your awareness Mm -hmm. to the space between both of your fingertips like and you just be with that you can feel it and we do it all the time like when you when you get a cut on your knee or Mm -hmm. like you you know when you're a kid and you cut yourself or something and you put your hand there yeah it's natural so reiki's always is done with the hands for those who don't know and so it's like we do that though like if we hurt ourselves we go oh we, we want to put our hands there. Right? Absolutely. So like we're already doing it. And I think mm-hmm. that that's one of the coolest parts about this is that we already do it. Absolutely. It's just with intention, something else happens. Yes, right? absolutely. And it's so funny you talk about just how natural that is. Because even when I'm on my period or have a stomach ache, I will lay down on the couch and Cal will just place his hands oh, yeah. on my belly or something mm-hmm. and we call it period reiki it's yes. our our amateur version and even that just having that i mean in that case that human touch but also that that energy shifting a little bit naturally it is so healing and so i had actually tried that but with a kind of a level up with one of my friends um i was visiting her for a little reunion and she had really severe period cramps to the point where she was almost vomiting like hers was really bad and so i said okay i don't technically quote unquote no reiki but as you said we all have kind of this natural ability and i said I'm just going to let my intuition guide, but I really want to try helping you. I said, Mm -hmm. can you get comfortable on the couch? And she said, yes, anything, please. And so I tried to kind of feel where there was more heat above her body. And granted, this might have been wrong, but around kind of her uterus area where there was a lot of heat, I was trying to kind of uh, 
wash it down her legs a little bit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're probably cringing inside no, but no, i'm not I at was, all okay. i'm amazed okay i'm, I'm but, like yes yes continue <laughs> and i was just really trying to use my intuition to discern okay it felt like too much energy here you know try to shift it down her body a little so it can escape through her feet um and she felt so much better after so whether it was that or whether it was just her friend saying i am going to help you lay on the couch and i'll do some magic it, it's all one and the same but i think the energy moving made a huge difference a thousand percent and you really truly help like that is living breathing proof that you you truly help that person and yeah I, I always say like, if it, if it hurts nobody and it just makes things better, yes, then it worked, then it's real. Yeah. Whether that's placebo mm-hmm. or that's something else, I know it's something else because I've, I've done so much of this that I'm yeah. like, there's just no way. I mean, the redwood tree is one of those examples where it's like, we'll never know, mm-hmm. but I'm not here to convince anybody. Yeah. I, I'm only here to convince myself and that's already done. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So you know what I mean? And so yeah. you did. So like in that example, that's a brilliant example of you like already doing Reiki, you know? And so mm. I have a lot of students who will come and say like, oh, I, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but like I, sh- one, one student yeah. jump started a car. What? I'm not even kidding you. Wait, she was tell like, this story. She was like, <laughs> so she, so, and she was, and she's amazing. She's like, she's like, I read like four books on Reiki and I was like, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what can I teach you? I don't yes. know. Um, but she was there for Reiki one and um, it was a really incredible, she's, um, she's incredible. But she was like, yeah, I, I was like, I, it was the first book I read and we were on this road trip and our car stalled out and nothing was working. She's really good with cars. And she, she was like, I just like, we're going to have to call somebody. And she's like, okay, well, I, I'm going to try this thing that I've been reading about in a book called Reiki. And she reiki it and it worked like the car started. Oh and my there was another, there was another person I worked with who like she, when she'd get angry, like the lights would go out like the lights would like sh- the elect like the electricity of it oh and so gosh. this brings me to another point which is like when we don't know that our energy body is so powerful when we don't know our power we can do it's like it's like that old saying from like i don't know spider-man where it's like that with great power comes great responsibility yeah. like like we can do so much supportive healing work but we have to know and trust ourselves right yeah like Reiki, just because I've been attuned to it and I, I like taught, mm-hmm. teach it or was taught it mm-hmm. doesn't mean that I'm any more powerful than you are right. not knowing it. We all have this universal life force energy. Yeah, It's just, this is one teaching, one modality, one method of channeling it and moving it. Mm. Right. And it's very effective and it works really well. Yeah. But you did Reiki. Yeah. You did do Reiki. Yeah. You know, I believe that. I mean, right. somebody else might say you didn't. Right. I believe you did. <laughs> right. I I felt like I did. So I we'll feel go like with that. you did too. <laughs> and you can feel it too. And it's, it's really interesting. I would love to hear other Reiki students or masters if they have a similar experience. But for yeah. me, every time I get Reiki now or, or sometimes I'll feel like somebody will be like, I think I really need Reiki and your hands will start to like spark. You're just like, whoa, okay. Like the energy is ready. Like it's, it's wow. there, you know? Um, so yeah. And then you can do Reiki on everything. You can That's do Reiki amazing. on your couch if you want. You can do Reiki on an airplane. It's a great one. Reiki for travel. Reiki, oh, you can Reiki my. everything and anything. Oh my gosh. Okay. We'll go there. But yeah. I wanted to ask, do you have a favorite client story or even one from another master where they had a session and there was some sort of shift or change? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. My favorite, oh my gosh. I see it so much and mm-hmm. so often. Um, but I think that my favorites, this is gonna speak to my Scorpio okay. um, energy, is doing hospice Reiki or animal Reiki on like emergency animal Reiki. Um, so Reiki's not a substitute for going to get support or help. 
Reiki is not a substitute. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, but it does work in conjunction with like vet's orders and in conjunction with doctor's orders and things like that. So mm-hmm. one of my favorite stories was uh, a client of mine who was not a human um, who <clears throat> had, well, it's, it's two it's two stories, but the, okay. but they're both they were kind of emergency situations. So this one was a horse who mm. had um, scar tissue. She was a breeding mare, and she had scar tissue, and she the medicine wasn't working. And so going into the session and just saying like hello, and so this goes into kind of animal communication too. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, why are you holding on to this? Like, why are we holding on to this? And I'm doing the Reiki as I'm communicating. And she's like, I don't want to, I don't want to be like trying inseminated anymore. Like I don't want to do this anymore, oh. you know? And I was just like, it's heartbreaking. It made me cry. Mm-hmm. But, um, but so, you know, I was like, okay, what do you need? You know, what do you need? And like, she's like the confirmation that like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'll let this go if I'm not doing this anymore. And I heard back from from her steward and she did everything I told her to do. And that's the thing too is like, I am just receiving these things. Right? Yes. And I'm just going to give them to you. You can do whatever you want with them. Um, and this was one of those brilliant cases where she was like, I'm going to take those and I'm going to apply them, you know? And like, it's not me, you know, Mm -hmm. I I really like to stress that it's not me. It's just, this is what I'm receiving from spirit. So like when you thank somebody, I just held the space for it, but you got to think whatever's up here. I don't care what you call it. Just just, that's what it's happening. Um, and she reached back out and she's like, it's, it, it's gone. The scar tissue's gone. It worked. And I was like, I don't know. I thought scar tissue was forever. Right. I didn't know that you could like get rid of it, right? Yes. I, I still don't know that answer. Um, but that was probably one of the mo- most profound ones. And then there was another one where it was a uh, an animal who, it was an emergency situation and she, I did Reiki and then I kept getting the download that it was like, you need, you're going to need to do a couple of sessions. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'll get those where I'm like, I'm not going to charge you extra for this. It's just, mm-hmm. this is what I'm being directed to do. So I need to do it in this way mm-hmm. if you're okay with it. Mm-hmm. And of course, most people say, yes, that's fine. Yes. Um, and this animal got the x-ray, this cat got the x-ray back and, and the vet was like blown away with how well this animal is doing after this you know very traumatic got hit by a car so it's just like you know anyway so those would be my two two like ones where they just really brought me to my knees with Mm -hmm. how like profound um and then the redwood tree that was another like bring me to my knees like kind of wow okay yeah wow um, and then it's super, again, humbling. Yes. Because you're can, like, whoa. Can you tell a short synopsis of the redwood tree? It doesn't have to be short, but yeah. I told it, I mean, many episodes ago. And I yes. think it's so powerful. I want to rehear it. So uh, we had a really bad storm. Our redwood tree snapped in half. And that night, so that's that's what happened. Uh-huh. Uh, but it didn't hit anything. And th- so that was kind of the miraculous thing. And... That night, I I had gotten this, like, hit, intuitive hit, or this message of, like, cast a net of Reiki over everybody's homes. I was like, that's interesting and bizarre and weird. So I listened. Because that's (laughs) always, that's always the way. It's like, it's like these bizarre things that just come out of left field. And you're like, what? That's always how I kind of am able to discern what's my thought voice. Sometimes it's not, you know, mm. sometimes it's still that fear voice that's yeah. talking and and it's not a perfect system and I think mm-hmm. that's okay. And anyway, so I got that cast in out of Reiki. I did it. Our redwood tree snaps in half. It's like 100 feet of redwood tree. It hits zero structures. Oh but gosh. the way that it hit was so bizarre because – when and even when the guys came to like take it away they but they were like scratching their heads and they're like trees don't his quote was trees don't fall this way oh my god and so i'm like i don't know what to tell you well, this and one like, did this one did <laughs> because it didn't just snap in half and fall it fell like 10 feet 
parallel perfectly on a concrete slab. Oh my gosh. So it wasn't like angled or anything. It was just over the fence and then over, if that makes sense. Yes. So like here's the tree and then it just went snap and instead of falling where it should have, it went like parallel and like over. Right. It was super wow. bizarre. So that That's one was just amazing. like noted yes i'm gonna listen again next time noted. Mm -hmm. wow. so to kind of wrap up this reiki section because i want to <laughs> yeah. i want to move further into <laughs> the animal communication the intuitive hits all of that yeah. what are kind of your tips suggestions for people that might want to practice some self reiki if that's a thing yeah so reiki one if you're trained in reiki one that is to practice on the self okay um and and you can do other people as well um some but some disciplines say no so okay. so, so it really depends but the way that i was trained you can practice on yourself it's the way that we're kind of taught to do Reiki is you heal yourself and then you do you work with your family and friends mm. and then you so you kind of work your way out yeah um and that's a whole other story but mm -hmm. so in Reiki one you learn how to practice Reiki on yourself again we do it all the time though mm -hmm. you know when we have an ache or a pain and we put our hands there that like kind of self-soothing yeah there's another modality called healing touch therapy okay. that's done actually at stanford so it's reiki at stanford wow. Stanford does reiki I love that. Uh, which is super cool um so if you want to do that or there's there's tips to that of course this is its own training and things mm -hmm. like that but if you just want to do it at home for yourself bring your attention to the energy in your hands mm -hmm. and then place it on place it on wherever you need that mm. that support and the thing that I found is that the more that I step out of my own way and just trust that it's done, because when I like try to like put my hand here and like force it in, you know, it's yes, like, is that the, yes, it, it always it's it's a block. And so you just hand, like energy between the hands and then just place it, place mm. it there um, and then breathe and then breathe. And it's just like just see what happens see what happens stay in the curiosity of it like that's the best exercise i can give yeah for somebody who who you know wants to just try and start yeah and or you you can go get reiki you know find a reiki practitioner that speaks to you yeah um I, again it's everybody's everybody does reiki a little differently so that can be a journey you know mm -hmm. But I think that just for the self, that would be my suggestion. That's beautiful. What I love about putting the touch on yourself also is, A, I think we're completely devoid of human touch these days. So if yeah. you got to do it for yourself, that's totally fine. And two, I feel like if you have some sort of ache or pain, like let's say you have a lot of right wrist pain or something and you place your hands there, I also feel like you can almost ask this is going to sound potentially silly for some people listening, but ask your wrist. Like, yes, what what is wrong? What do you need? How can I care for you? Like, what is the message from this this ache? And so I think just connecting with yourself, learning to ask yourself, your body, what it needs. I mean, it is an intuitive, brilliant entity on its own. So I feel like that exercise is powerful in so many ways. Yeah, I love that you said ask. I think that that's such a powerful tool yeah. to have in your tool belt is just to ask your body, what do you need? Yes. You know, just like asking the horse, like, what do you need to let this go? What do you need from us? What What do you need? Yeah. And it's interesting. I would love to hear from other people who do any sort of practice practice but yeah. I find for myself it's always easier to do it for others than it is on myself mm -hmm. um and I think it's just because there's there's a lot there you know it's yes. like it's so close right yes so the last piece to this would be just to stay in the curiosity um and be gentle with yourself because mm -hmm. the expectations are what kind of crumble the experience Absolutely. Well said. I think also what you said about, you know, when you're kind of pushing it, it's like, I'm sending love into my knee. I'm sending love yeah. into my knee. Like, that's where it's actually not working as well. No. Um, yeah. <laughs> so gorgeous. I feel like we kind of wrapped that Reiki section up a little bit. I do want to transition into this animal communication 
opening yourself up intuitively before we hit record we were talking with cal about how i love that you said all of this whether you're communicating with a redwood tree or a horse or a cat or a spirit guide an alien if you will it's all kind of through the same mechanism Mm -hmm. so can you explain that a little bit yeah and then of course this is all how I perceive it right yeah. so I think it's gonna you might ask this question to 10 different people and get 10 different answers yeah but for the for me how it's worked is that everything is energy and how we interpret that energy um, is really the the key to understanding how to communicate so mm. um, knowing how you interpret we have all different psychic channels. So clear, and they're all through the senses. So Mm -hmm. clear seeing, clear smelling, clear tasting, clear hearing, um, clear feeling, clear knowing. Like they're all um, different. Yeah. The clairs, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so, and then clairvoyance isn't just, I always thought it was just like, oh, somebody sees a ghost, like they're clairvoyant, right? Yeah. Um, And that's freaky and that scares me and I don't (laughs) want that. Um, And so I was like, oh, clairvoyance. uh." Um, And that's not the case. So Mm. there's two different types of clairvoyance. You can see it through your mind's eye. So the example I gave was like an apple. Yeah. Do you see it? Did you hear it crunch? Mm. Did you taste it? Did you smell it? Um, The more that you do any of these whether it's Reiki or if you're dabbling in mediumship or you're dabbling in crystals or healing or anything, Mm -hmm. you're just working with your psychic channels. You're just, you're working with your intuition. All of it's going to develop your intuition. Yeah. Um, And it's not even like you're, and I, I want to be careful with the language there because it's not like any of our intuition needs to be developed. It's more that we just need to um, learn how to have a relationship with it. It's, it's already there. It's already powerful. It's already got its foundations. It's yeah. just we need to learn how we communicate with it. And then yeah. from that point, you're able to, you know, work with animals, work with people, work with the, just the whole energy body of the world around us, plants, in yeah. a very different way because we know how to communicate. Yes. Yes. And I – so so many things to say about that. <laughs> One – I love that you said we all naturally have the ability to communicate. I think it's so easy to watch the Hollywood medium or someone like that and be like, I know Tyler Henry's the best. We saw him live in San Jose. It was amazing. Oh my God. (laughs) If you're listening, look up Tyler Henry. He is one of the sweetest, cutest, most wholesome mediums you will ever experience. I (laughs) just adore you, Tyler. Same. His book too. Oh, I haven't read it yet. His book is one of the most pragmatic approaches Ooh. to mediumship, to intuition <gasps> that I have ever read. And I love a good pragmatic spiritual yes, book. I do too. Like no other. And Tyler Henry really hit hit the mark there oh, for me. For okay. Me. I will definitely add that to the list. Yes. But I was going to say, it's so easy to look at someone like that and be like, oh, lucky him. He was, he was born that way. I mean- he definitely has a special attunement to that ability and he found it very early but I really do feel that it's almost like a dusty lamp in the attic (laughs) and if you just learn to (laughs) wipe off the dust suddenly it has clear bright light again Mm -hmm. so I feel like it's that way with our our intuition and the second piece that I just love about this whole conversation about animal communication intuitive hits is that you have to learn to trust as you've mentioned and that can be so hard Mm -hmm. but even for me like I haven't dabbled much in animal communication but I tried with my cat recently we don't have a cat in this apartment but where Where? yeah I know (laughs) so my childhood cat Nikki she is like 18 and a half years old she's old so we've had her since I was seven I've grown up my whole life with her and my parents moved two years ago to the East Coast and so they have my cat there. And when I went over winter break recently, I cried when I saw her because she's suddenly looking very old and it's like she's lost a lot of weight. She's skin and bones, you know, her butt is just pure bones and I decided to sit with her and try to communicate with her and just tell her how much I love her and you know how can we care for you and all of that and of course I was also just crying it was a whole thing but I had to trust that 
she is getting these messages if I am quote unquote doing it right or not. And so I just love that because that's a very pragmatic piece that it's not necessarily like everyone wakes up one day and it's like, I can see signs, but you have to learn to listen, you know, be quiet to listen and then trust. Yeah. The trust is the hardest part. Yeah. The trust is for me, it was the hardest part for sure. Yeah. And that's where the like exercises come in to ha- come in handy because basically what we're doing is we're building up a case to support that this is reliable, mm. right? That our intuition is something I can rely on, it's something that I can trust. Yeah. Um and we have a lot that's already built up against the intuition, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we have to we have to shift that, yeah. and that takes time. And I think cognitive knowing is one thing, but somatically actually believing in something and integrating it into our belief and our subconscious belief, yeah, that takes time. A lot of times. I mean, I know there's there's a lot of methods and ways that people say you can kind of get it in there quicker, right? Um, and I have seen, you know, hypnotherapy. I've done hypnotherapy before, and that's been really powerful and been supportive. Yeah. And I think it's just building up those that case file mm-hmm. to trust it. And our, our animals do listen, and they do feel us. And just because they don't communicate the way we do doesn't mean they don't communicate. Yeah. And I've said that ever since I was a little girl. I was like, I feel like they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Yeah. You know, and we, probably we're smarter starting than to us. see that. Like we're seeing, <laughs> like they just, didn't they just find a study where like they found out that bumblebees can play? Really? Yeah. Like they play just for fun. I and love like, that. W- there's just so much we don't know about them. Anyway. That's so, yes. Animals. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so I know before we hit record, we were also talking about your studies with, Emily Green and yes learning more about psychic mediumship intuitive all of that so what are some of the exercises or things that you've learned through her that that you could share here because I feel like a lot of people would be like I want to open up my intuitive channels (laughs) she's an amazing teacher for anybody who wants to learn I don't know if she still does it or uh, what what her offerings are right now um so first and foremost check her out and then secondly one of the things that she had us do and it does kind of help to have a second person okay to just kind of facilitate these things because well you'll you'll find well well, i'll explain yeah but um one of the things is just like i think we were talking about you know like holding the crystal and you'll Mm. see this sometimes on tiktok it's like which crystal am i holding do you see a color do you see shape do you see and the, the really interesting thing about that is that S- Emily always taught me you're never wrong. You're okay. just not sure how your intuition works yet. Interesting. So let me explain. So she did one that was like, she there was a photo of three objects and then she took one away, but you don't know which one she took away. So you have okay. to intuit, right? And so when I first started, the first without fail the pattern was I was picking up on the one that um not the one that she took away but I was picking up on the two that she didn't oh so I had to write down like one two three and then it was the third one so but but for some it was always the second one and for for others it was like you know and so that's critical information because mm-hmm. then we can kind of know okay and, and then over time also it's like oh I was getting in my way so now it's like okay I know that I need to let my thought voice get a get a chance first mm-hmm. and then the second one became the one that was like without fail the right one that you is know so, so then it's and now it's different because obviously I like you know see things differently or hear things differently or it's clearer yeah um but that was that was a really great exercise but it kind of requires a second person Mm -hmm. because you need to know what they took took away yeah but it's also so interesting i'm trying to put myself in the shoes of of one of the students experiencing that and the way that i think i would feel at the beginning is almost like it's a muscle that i've never worked out 100 percent because as I even said to you before we hit record, I can imagine at the beginning, 
especially if you're wrong a lot, it's like, oh my God, I'm never going to get this. Like so frustrating. Like I have no abilities, you know, I'm just not special. I'm not good at this. Yes. And I think just the more you practice and the more you trust, it's there. And I actually have a kind of a crazy example from a few years ago. To this day, I haven't been able to figure out why this happened, why it's like I had a week of being, I would say, almost weirdly psychic, but I did hasn't come back since might but be the astrology yes <laughs> might be the and astrology so the time. <laughs> exactly and so it was um winter break of my senior year of college and the first experience I had in this week was that I had just walked out of my final final exam and one of my girlfriends I was still waiting for her to finish her test and then we were going to exchange gifts afterwards and so while I was waiting for her in the hallway I saw a vision of a sunflower and then the word sunflower in my head. And I thought, that's really random. I have no idea what that is. She came out, gave me the gift, and it was a poetry book about sunflowers. And so I was like, that's crazy. The next day, I went to the airport. And when I was walking to my gate, I saw this guy sitting in one of those window nooks. And his back was towards me and he was reading a book. And I couldn't I couldn't see any words. I couldn't even, I was on the opposite side of where I would see the book cover. So I just told myself, guess what book he's reading? And I instantly heard in my head, To Kill a Mockingbird. And so I walked around and it was To Kill a Mockingbird. And so those were just two examples I remember, but it was so crazy. And actually the reason I started this podcast is because I kept getting these weird intuitive hits on walks and the name came from me seeing it. This summer I was with my family at this beach house and I asked everyone randomly just a fun question. I said, if you had to get a tattoo this afternoon, you know, what would you get? Oh and I saw the words, it's all magic. And I said, I I guess my tattoo would say it's all magic. And we kind of laughed it off. Like, why did I see that? So like a week later, when I decided I'm finally starting the podcast, Cal was like, you already saw the name. What it's going to be. Yes. So anyway, I say all of this to share that I am also a normal person. And it's not like every day I'm, I'm seeing visions or anything, but just the more you also play with it. I think earlier you mentioned kind of that playfulness in spirituality. Don't be so dang serious. No. And especially as a Leo, like that's (laughs) not going to, that's not the business. Yes. You know, like that playfulness, like as Leos, Leos know, Leos know the value and the importance, um, like put some respect on play, right? Because like the playfulness, and that, that's something, too, that Julia Cameron talks about in the artist way. Yes. It's just like when we're too serious, we block our creativity. And guess where creativity lives? In the same place as our intuition. Wow. Right? So, so that's part of it. So my question to you would be like, okay, at the airport and those things, like, what was your mindset like? What were you doing? What was... Um, where were you in the world? Yeah. Like all of those things. I'd be really curious because then you can go back and this is another exercise people can do is like you can kind of go back and and reinvent the scenario yeah. that kind of led to those intuitive hits happening. Well, I love that you say that because I'm thinking back in both scenarios. So the one where I just finished my final, final exam, I'm flying back home to California from Ohio. I went to Ohio State. So I'm getting out of the cold. I'm going home to the sunshine. I'm going to see my family tomorrow. I mean, it was pure bliss. Like I was done with the hard stuff. And then the second where I saw It's All Magic, I was in Charleston, South Carolina at a beach house with my family on July 4th. So both cases, it's like, I'm just having a good time now. And I think... Maybe also as a Leo, it's like I need to be in that joyful light place to hear the messages. Because then in my day to day life, if I am stressed or overworked and I'm trying to even make a simple decision, what dinner to make, which we've all been there. It's like I I have no idea. Yeah. Zero idea. Yeah. So, So in that case, question for you. If someone's listening and they're kind of putting two and two together and figuring out, 
in what situations they have clearer intuitive messages but maybe that doesn't look like their everyday day-to-day life how can you start to bring some of that into your life so that you can open yourself up to be in that intuitive place yeah um that's a great question and i think it's going to be different for everybody Mm -hmm. i hate to be the person that always says that but um it will be different for everybody but i think that the thing that you can rely on is uh reflecting on your previous experiences with it Mm. so again a similar question of like when i was in that intuitive space like what what were the similarities? What were the differences, Mm. right? And something that I have found on this whole journey has been that kind of paradox of like the thing that we really, really want, it does want us, but it doesn't want us to put pressure on wanting it. (laughs) Oh my God. It's the hardest life lesson. It is. (laughs) And it's like, it's just like, it's going to come in its own time. And putting pressure on ourselves to be this intuitive person again it's that expectation like kind of kills the kills the experience Mm -hmm. um and so I think releasing expectation is like another piece to that but if you want to have more of those experiences where you're like really getting those intuitive hits first and foremost release the expectation Mm. um and then just get curious and say like okay well like what's what was similar what was different and and then play with it okay play with it try new things what's exciting to you you know like what exercises would be exciting to you what um and you can do it in your day-to-day it's not even stuff like you don't have to be sitting on your meditation mat and like trying all of these things you don't need anything it can Mm -hmm. be in your day-to-day I wonder what book he's reading. Hmm. <laughs> what am I seeing? What am I feeling? What am I sensing? What am I smelling? Yeah. Um, there are some people who are like so clear alien. I think it's aliens. Clear. What is that? No. One? Clear salience, right? S- something like that. Yeah. Where you can smell I, clearly. Yes. Yeah. They can like smell somebody's like cancer. You know, That's there's wild. a really good book about that. Actually, it's called The Scientist and the Psychic. Ooh. And it's about this scientist whose mom was like, really well-known psychic in the 80s I think 70s okay. or 80s and um great book okay kind of talks a lot about that but anyway long story short just ask in your day-to-day or like um what, what was Chris one of my friends she was like trying to test a very specific that's the other thing you can test a clear so if you want to uh open yourself up more to clear he clear hearing yeah. right um start to think about like okay what does what does a bell sound like mm. what does you know it like and then ask too that was another thing emily had taught me was to ask you know i want to start receiving messages through my hearing mm. so send them send them that way see I what happens that. you know so i, I think um there's to- there's a bunch of different ways that you can go about it, but those are yeah. a couple. What I mind. love, yeah, no, that's brilliant. And what I love about that last one is it just makes me think of a very practical application of this too, which is something I'll do sometimes before going to bed. If there is a difficult decision I'm struggling with or I'm unclear about my path forward, I will ask. I will say right before going to bed, like please send me answers in my sleep please send me guidance clarity I need help and then sometimes I will wake up in the morning with a clear idea Mm -hmm. and so I think going back I mean this is it's funny that it's going full circle but at the very beginning you were talking about how the more you know the more you realize you don't know and that (laughs) we don't understand how this whole universe works like we we can't yeah and yet just playing with it like just ask even if you don't know who's listening on the other side of the phone booth maybe it's god maybe it's spirit maybe it's universe sky daddy it doesn't matter (laughs) but someone might answer so pick up the dang phone yeah (laughs) that's how it feels yeah and i feel like it's so perfect that your podcast is so appropriately named because it feels like magic when these synchronicities happen you're like holy moly this this is magical yes this is so magical and then it 
it's so comforting to know that it's like it is and it's not. Yes. You know, like it is, but it's it's actually not <laughs> at all. <laughs> totally. Um, and I find that to be quite comforting that you can just ask and see. Yeah. And I think um, for those who are listening who do struggle with, you know, maybe really low self-esteem, mm-hmm. self-worth, self-value, you get to ask. You're allowed to ask. You are allowed to ask and mm-hmm. see what happens. And it's not a punishment if it doesn't get received. Again, it's that expectation, right? Yeah. I was so afraid to ask at the beginning because I was like, well, who am I to ask? What is it that you you're know? asking for? Like, just for help? The universe, you oh, know? Yeah. Or like, who am I to talk to my guides? Who am I to... Like, who am I to, to, to do these things? Because mm-hmm. I was so trained in a very specific way of, of like, um, being with my religion yeah. or my spirituality. And when, when you think about it, like, that blocks so much flow. And so it was, like, such a, it was such a huge experience yeah, just to get to the point of being able to ask. You know? Absolutely. And then it's like sometimes I still forget. Yeah. Like Kristen asked me once, I was I had this like whole meditative experience and I was like, it was really wild and um and I was like, this goddess, she just kept asking me to help, like help us, help us, help us. And I was like, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. And then Kristen was like, Well, did you ask her? And I was like, <gasps> am I allowed to like you know like <laughs> yes. I mean it was just like this whole thing and wow. and so like getting out of your own head about even that like there's so many layers to it and so that's part of what I mean when I say like be gentle with yourself mm. because this journey is going to also take you on an, a deeply immersive healing experience yeah um to self-love mm-hmm. and so that's like the intuit it's like the intuition is almost like the carrot at the end of the stick but yeah. it's like it's really what it's really getting at is that inner it development work that inner oh. like journey that inner self-love the returning to love i love that um, i love that we just spent half yeah. an hour talking about intuition and then you're like but that's not even the goal yeah. <laughs> it's so true that's life that's, that's literally life. life yeah it's like so. you think you want the title change but really it's the process of getting there and who you become in the process so Wow. So at this point, before we wrap up with some yes. fun rapid fire questions, okay. I just want to ask if there's anything else on your heart or mind that you want to share before we start wrapping this puppy up. You're so, un- oh, yes, I do. I, I want to say you're so unbelievably worthy. Mm. Um, and you're so unbelievably worthy because worthiness is a man made construct. Like, Nobody actually gets to decide if you're worthy or not. Yeah. You just like exist and you're worthy. Just like everything has like a right to be, you know, here. Yes. Just like the ants have a right to be here. And, you know, even, you know, whatever life has created has a right to be here. Um, and so I just, you're not alone, you know, like that's, you're not alone and you are worthy of being here. I um, and I, I just want to like shout that from the rooftops, like every every time every chance i get so yeah oh yeah. i love that straight from the cancer moon i, I know love you're worthy you're worthy you're you. lovable yes, I you're lovable you. <laughs> do you want a snack i love that okay so for the rapid fire we have four the first is always personalized for the guests and then the last three are the same okay it's okay if you didn't do your homework it's meant to be just off the cuff Perfect. so the first one my dear what is your current favorite taylor swift jam <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that one was coming <laughs> oh my gosh it depends on my mood yes. um my current taylor's favorite taylor swift song is it's a good question it's supposed to be rapid fire i should just say something <laughs> no you can take um, as long as you want what have i been like really li- you know what it's the archer on the lover album i don't think i've even heard that <sighs> I've been the archer. After I've this. been the prey. Who could ever leave me, darling? But who could stay? Oh, yeah. that's good. Combat. Oh, we gotta listen to that I'm after ready this. To call that. Yeah. No, it's just like such a, it's such an atmospheric one. But my favorite song of hers is "This Is Me Trying," which oh. is um, on the Folklore album, and it's okay. like, that's a that's a deep cut amazing and also every other song on every other album (laughs) every other song (laughs) and every other album just like listen just listen to her lyrics if you if you're a person who really enjoys listening to lyrics i feel like she's just a great 
she's a great artist yeah for you because you listen to lyrics if you're somebody who doesn't like listening or doesn't like really care about them like yeah. then i love lyrics. i don't know maybe she's not for you but yeah I to each her. his own but like really i, love the lyrics. <laughs> I know <laughs> okay moving on to rapid fire number okay. two what spiritual or health practice do you recommend for everyone it is just that freaking amazing uh, this is so simple but like diaphragmic breathing oh my gosh yes can you just quickly explain what that is yeah so a lot of us breathe like up here in our chest like yeah but actually getting into the belly here like <sighs> like a and, like, baby sleeping in their crib exactly like breathe out breathing out um like a little bit longer than you're breathing in too um that's a surefire way to give you like i think i just like breathe in the microphone it's gonna be like really loud sorry <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah. um but uh yeah that that's critical mm. amen sister amen okay number three what does this world need most right now for global healing and up leveling honestly to know how much you matter mm. to know how much you like you really do matter your voice matters every single action you take matters um so people being more intentional be and knowing that they matter because when we don't matter when we think we don't matter we we take actions that we don't think we're like well we don't matter so yeah we end up hurting a lot of things and people and and you do you actually matter a whole freaking lot so um yeah oh, beautiful okay last one what is your one wish or ask for everyone listening oh my one wish or ask yeah that's such a good question um my wish and my ask is to stay curious Mm. Just stay curious. I love that. Beautiful. Thank you for coming on, my friend. This has Thank been a you. wonderful conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for listening. Of course. So where can the people find you if they want to learn more, work with you, all the things? Yeah, it's a mouthful, but Santa Cruz Mountain Reiki mm -hmm. .com. Um, Okay. You can book a session there. I have full moon circles every month. So that's in the, it's all on the website and you can hang out with us in the under a full moon and we do moon magic and group reiki so you can experience reiki for you know 22 dollars um which is you know i think one of the things that we need to talk about another time but yeah um yeah so yeah i would say like just the website www.santacruzmountainreiki.com okay. <laughs> um and then my personal instagram is jenna j-e-n-n-a -N -N -A, period monaco m-o-n-a-c-o like the country but no affiliation unfortunately <laughs> okay. um and i also have santa cruz mountain reiki instagram as well so amazing and i'll link everything in the description so they'll be able to find you but thank you again this was wonderful wonderful and for everyone listening we will catch you next week adios Hey, my friends, I hope you loved that episode. I loved the topics we touched on, everything from psychic intuitive abilities to animal communication, Reiki, energy, life force, mental health, meditation. I mean, you name it, and we probably talked about it. And those are my favorite kinds of conversations. So I hope that you took at least one nugget of wisdom away. I definitely encourage you to check out Jenna's offerings and just check out her as a person. Go to her Instagram, look at her website. She really is just oh, such a masterful healer medicine woman. And as I said at the beginning, I'm just grateful to know her. And now you all know her as well. So welcome to the Lucky Club. Without further ado, I want to wrap up for this week because I know we all have busy lives and other things to get onto, but as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a family member or friend. It really helps the podcast spread, so I am eternally grateful in advance for you sharing this episode. I cannot wait to see you again next week. Okay, my friends, bye for now.